What is up YouTube, Crafting Cars here, happy Tuesday. Now for today's video, we're going to be piecing together and installing an auxiliary oil cooler setup on our 97 Civic here. And we'll be walking through the whole process together. So hopefully this video can help you out as well. So here's our materials for today. Everything's pretty straightforward. Here we have the Vibrant Thermatic Oil Cooler Adapter. It's basically just a regular old sandwich plate, but it has a thermostat built in that is set to open up at 180 degrees and send oil to your oil cooler. It's got two dash 10 AN fittings on there uh, for hooking up your lines and everything. And then it also comes with this little adapter here. This is just for bolting it to your block and still having threads to thread on your oil filter. I'll just be using a Honda oil filter today. They send washers and O-rings as well so you can get everything sealed up and seated properly. I'm using an assortment of fittings today. I like to get my fittings from Vibrant as well. So got a couple 90s, 45s and straight fittings here. And we're basically just gonna kind of play around and see what's gonna look the cleanest and work the best for when we install this in our car. Uh, oil cooler, I decided to go with a Mishimoto. They're a little bit on the pricey side, um, but with something like this, it's pretty important you get something high quality because the last thing you want to do is have your oil cooler blow up on you. So uh, we got that there. And then here is just a basic bracket. I welded, welded together. It's just two pieces of scrap steel. And then I spray painted it red just to keep it from rusting. I've got some basic hardware for bolting everything up. And then here is 10 feet of dash 10 AN hose. And one other thing that I had to pick up was this inch and an eighth deep well socket. I didn't have one stocked in my garage here. So basically this is just gonna be used to tighten the sandwich plate against your block. So first things first, you're gonna wanna find a good spot to mount up your oil cooler. You wanna make sure it's in a spot where it's gonna get plenty of airflow. Uh, mine's gonna be mounted right about here. And that'll make a lot more sense once I throw the front bumper on. Uh, it's basically mounted right behind one of the side ducts on the front bumper. So I'll go ahead, attach my bracket. And then one of the ways I decided to attach my oil cooler to my bracket here was the Mishimoto coolers. They have holes already drilled onto these tabs. So all I had to do was drill those holes a little bit bigger. And then I inserted rib nuts in those holes so I could just use M6 bolts to attach it to my bracket. Now, if you've been following the channel recently, you probably noticed that quite a few things are missing from the car right now. Just today, I took off the front bumper, the front splitter, our little uh, password JDM carbon fiber piece, our turbo manifold, downpipe, uh, the turbo itself. And then just to make our lives easier, I took off the intake manifold so we could just dive right in and have a good look at what we're working with here. So this is my old setup. What you're looking at here is a glow shift oil sandwich plate. And I use this to feed filtered oil to my turbo as well as my oil pressure sensor here. Now, I try to just do a direct swap and see how this would fit. And it is not gonna work with the way that the NPT ports are set up on the Vibrant sandwich plate. I'm not gonna be able to get this working. Um, my fittings here are also gonna crash into the water pipe. So what I'm gonna have to do is kind of like a double decker uh, sandwich, you know, McDouble style uh, type setup here. So <laughs> I'm gonna be using the glow shift sandwich plate as well as the Vibrant plate here. And I'm just gonna have to mount it right on top. So I went ahead and plugged the NPT ports on the Vibrant plate, and we're just gonna have to install it like that. And even with the sandwich setup, there's only one direction you can face these fittings, and that is kind of towards the alternator like that. So I'll have this mounted up, and then the lines are gonna have to go kind of snake around over the side of the block, down this hole, and then onto the oil cooler itself. I think it's kind of obvious by now, but Vibrant doesn't sell this plate specifically for the Civic. Um, this is a universal type fit, but they do a really good job sending you with any type of thread adapter you could ever want. There was so many in the package as well as so many different types of O-rings and washers. So you could probably make this work with any kind of car. Um, but for today, we're gonna take this plate here and this special washer here. And you can see you got that little machined out portion right there. The tooth on the washer is gonna sit right in there like so. And then when we go to tighten this thing to the block, we're gonna take our thread adapter. And usually this would thread on to the back of the block where the factory oil filter threads on. 
but this is going to be threading on to our glow shift thread adapter from our earlier sandwich plate. So this will be like so, and that'll just keep this washer from moving. And then you're going to want to torque this thing down, I believe, to 46 foot-pounds. They have a nice little, oh yeah, 45 foot-pounds. They have a nice little diagram for you here. So you just torque it down to 45 foot-pounds, and then whichever one of these teeth lines up the best, you're going to want to take it and bend it up carefully not scratching the surface. And then once you bend that up, that's gonna keep this nut from ever backing out. And to make sure everything's nice and sealed up, they provide you with an O-ring that fits nicely in this slot. And just like when you install an oil filter, you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of oil on this O-ring just to keep it from getting stretched out or warped or anything like that. So with that being said, I think we're ready to install this plate in the car and I'll do my best to get a good camera angle while we're in there working. cooler and our thermostatic oil cooler adapter plate mounted up, we're ready to start running our lines. I decided to go with two straight fittings off the side of our cooler adapter plate and two 90 degree fittings off the top of our cooler. Right, guys so here's what we're working with very happy with how it turned out i feel like i say that all the time but we eventually got the lines hooked up to the cooler and ran as clean as possible all the way back to our mcdouble sandwich plate back there so one thing you want to look out for is any area where the lines could rub on each other excessively or rub on a sharp metal edge such as this one here so i'll probably be putting some rubber lining on these edges here and then using the an line separators that look like this just to kind of keep everything safe and organized because pretty important. And another thing, Vibrant recommends if you're gonna be starting the car right away after install, that you get this thing filled up with oil and get as much oil in the lines as possible. Just so when that thermostat plate finally opens up at 180 degrees, your engine isn't left without oil pressure for a couple seconds because that could potentially cause some damage. Now for today, I am gonna hold off on filling this up just because it's going to be at least a month before I get this car started back up. 
Uh, some of you guys know I'm waiting on that T3 top mount manifold from PLM to come back from ceramic coating. And then once I get that, I've got a whole lot of fabrication to do. I'll mock up the turbo and try to figure out where I'm going to route my intake piping now, see if I have to make any changes to my intercooler, and then I may have to move or possibly replace my radiator. Um, I know PLM has a very nice radiator setup that I've been looking at, so hopefully if our partnership goes through, I can get a hold of that, and that would be awesome. So yeah, this is what you get today. I am very happy with the end result. If you have any questions, because I know when I was looking into this, I had a ton of questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I will leave all the parts used in the description as well. All right, so just to double check our fitment, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the front bumper back on and the intake manifold as well. And there you go. So this is where our oil cooler is positioned, right behind that duct. Air should flow straight into there, no problem. Should work awesome. And then the intake manifold still fits. Very nice. Well, there you have it guys, another functional Civic modification checked off of my to-do list. So I hope today's video helped you out. Um, like I said earlier, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps us out I'm trying to grow our channel here. So any feedback is also really appreciated. Uh, yeah, I post videos every Tuesday, doing this kind of Civic content, a lot of car reviews, tutorials, um, some vlogs thrown in there every once in a while. We really do it all here, so yeah. I guess uh, that's all I got for you today. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.